All right, we have joining us via Skype, Dr. Urode Doherty. Thank you very much for joining us. I can hear you. What right. I'm asking, is this an audio or a video call? Because it is your um, life right now on the news. Excellent. All right, so let, let's just get right to it. Boss Mustafa, the SGF, now says he was misquoted. Still... His clarification amounts to the same thing. He was not fully aware of the condition of our health system. What does this tell us? Of what impact will this newfound realization have on the health sector going forward? Um, so um, I think that it just means that there's a, a disconnect maybe between um, federal, state, local governments. Um, I'm not sure what part of the healthcare system he discovered there was something that he was um, surprised about. But I think that in general, there is um, a disconnect um, sort of at the highest, with the highest levels of healthcare decision making in Nigeria, with sort of what is the, the real capacity and the infrastructure on ground. And I think that this is a good say wake up call for us. And it's an opportunity to, to get things right, hopefully. Okay, the, the SDF's comment is not the only one that's raising concerns. There's also the one uh, by the health minister on the issue of hazard allowance. What worries you about this and how careful should they be? A lot of damage can be done before one can clear the air, don't you think? Absolutely. And again, it's about a disconnect between what's going on on ground and the highest levels of healthcare decision making in Nigeria. So statements like that just tell people like us, that um, there is a gap in the understanding of what our real working conditions are and uh, between what people think and what people, what the actuality is on ground about real working conditions and the opportunities to, to close those gaps hopefully now present themselves and we can, we can get to work right away. COVID-19 has served as a report card and we have been found wanting. Now, what mm -hmm. aspects of our deficiency in the health sector have been shown to need urgent um, attention, in your opinion? So, I, I think I would start again from sort of um, the capacity to make key decisions in a timely manner um, and decisively for the benefit of the larger population. So, if you take COVID-19 as an example, it became clear very quickly that the cases that we had were coming in from outside the country. One quick thing that could have been done in order to sort of stem that, stop it, and then begin to focus on, you know, ensuring that we contained it was to um, really focus on attending to the incoming flights, closing the borders very early, making sure that the individuals who were coming in were appropriately quarantined, and looking at sort of what was happening in every country in real time to determine which countries on a day-to-day -day basis needed to be added to the list. So that's sort of a large sort of decision-making opportunity. Obviously, um, from where I sit, primary health care continues to be an issue. If people had access to primary health care, doctor, nurse, a medical home of some sort, it would be very easy to very quickly begin to send out information to panels of patients asking people to come in, telling them where to go if they develop symptoms. Um, if you have health insurance, it makes people more um, confident about approaching, approaching health care providers. So th those two things are really, I think, critical. Most of um, the health care payments that Nigerians make are actually made out of pockets. More than 70% of payments are made out of pockets. So the first thing people think when they are ill or when they think they need to access the healthcare system is, how am I going to pay? We know that most of our population is actually poor. Um, I would say that we, should, we need incentives for people to work in both high-density ur urban areas and in rural areas. Many of these places are not exciting to work in. Uh, people don't go there of their own volition if they can help it. So uh, a lot of the time, what you find is that there is substandard care happening in those places. And in cases like that, you may find that people are missing the opportunity to educate the public or the opportunity to quickly identify that there is an issue and it needs to be referred up. Um, functional linkages between um, primary health centers, secondary health facilities, and tertiary health facilities, we need to get that going. Um, 
And, and you know, when you have that, then if primary healthcare is functioning, then behavior change can function. And you can teach people how to navigate and, as it were, ascend the ladder of healthcare provision. So these are some of the areas. Obviously, um, training. Uh, we have gaps in our training. We have completes in some areas, um, sort of okay. entire areas where we don't have intensivists in Nigeria, for example. These are... These are um, Specialists that work in an ICU, for example, and um, because we don't do ICU training per se, we do anesthesiology training. Um, we don't have specialists ready whom we can call upon. So we are equipping isolation centers now. We've had to put up two, three in Lagos. Um, another few are going up in different parts of the country. So we, we are missing that. This sort of the last part of the response to an infectious disease outbreak um, and the need to secure people in isolation centers, for example. Those kinds of things are missing. Um, All right. Doctor, let, let me interject and ask. You've highlighted yes. a whole lot of areas that need attention. But uh -huh. where do you think we should start to address the dilapidation that is apparent for all to see? Where do we I would, start? I would always start with primary health care. Primary health care is the basic foundation of health care delivery. If you have a robust primary health care system that includes and takes into account the financial capacity of people to pay, so we're talking now about universal health coverage, then you begin to build a system that will, will withstand shocks and that will ensure that people are able to navigate the system. So I will always start up with primary health care. Okay, if I let you go, um, some doctors, I spoke to a couple that say they're hoping that this pandemic will make the government see the need to set things right uh, in the health sector. Do you see this happening, especially with your realization by the SGF and, of course, the backlash to comments made by the Minister uh, for Health? I hope it will happen. One thing that has certainly we, we have been lacking in Nigeria is political will to do the right thing for the populace. And if there is an opportunity here and it is grabbed because leadership deems it necessary, then absolutely it will happen. But until and unless that happens, um, and then this is political will to actually go the whole hog and do it, it's not going to happen. Um, so you need political will. If we see political will, absolutely it will happen, of course. All right. Thank you very much for joining us on thank the you. news. Thank you for having me.